Welcome to a geometry lesson by Mr. Pi the Math Guy. Today we're going to be classifying quadrilaterals. Remember, quadrilaterals are polygons or many sided figures that have exactly four sides. Quadrilaterals. The first here in red is a parallelogram, and a parallelogram is defined as a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. That would be sides across from each other are parallel, which means they would never intersect. So in this case, the top and the bottom line, or side, will never cross, and the left and the right-hand side will never cross. Moving down here to the green shape, this is called a rhombus, and a rhombus is defined as a parallelogram with four congruent sides. So a rhombus has opposite sides that are parallel, and all four sides are congruent or are of the same size. Here in the purple we have a rectangle, and a rectangle is defined as a parallelogram with four right angles. A rectangle is a special parallelogram in which all angles are 90 degrees. Here in the blue we have a square, some of these shapes you definitely should be familiar with. A square is defined as a parallelogram with four congruent sides and four right angles. So a square is a special parallelogram. It has four sides that are equal and has 90 degree angles, all four of them. Here in the orange we have a kite. In fact, if you rotate this shape, the shape would look like a kite that you might fly in the sky, like that. Okay, here, but I do have it on the side. And by definition, a kite is a quadrilateral with two pairs of adjacent sides congruent and no opposite sides congruent. Okay, so here, the sides on the left of the kite would be congruent, and the sides on the right-hand side of the kite are congruent. They are adjacent sides because they form, the two smaller sides form an angle. That's, by definition, adjacent sides. Finally, we have here on the black a trapezoid. It is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. Here, the top and the bottom are the parallel sides, and the left and the right are the non-parallel sides. This particular trapezoid is a special kind of trapezoid called an isosceles trapezoid, where these two legs, or the non-parallel sides, are congruent. So we do have trapezoids and isosceles trapezoids that we need to concern ourselves with. Pictured here is an isosceles trapezoid, but they don't have to be isosceles to be considered a trapezoid. Example 1, classifying a quadrilateral. By appearance alone, classify polygon A, B, C, D in as many ways possible. First off, I want to warn you, it's very rare that we judge things in geometry by appearance alone. In this case, since it tells us to, we do. But usually, unless we can prove it with theorems, corollaries, definitions, we don't assume anything. In this particular case, polygon A, B, C, D has four sides, and by definition, that is a quadrilateral. So one way we could classify this is as a quadrilateral. In the previous slide, when we were looking at the special types of quadrilaterals, we were concerned with opposite sides, angles, and adjacent sides. Let's take a look at opposite sides first. In this particular quadrilateral, side AB and side DC appear to be parallel. Therefore, we have one pair of opposite sides to be parallel. If we look at side AD and side BC, they do not appear to be parallel. And by definition, when there is one pair of opposite sides parallel, we can classify that quadrilateral as a trapezoid. Now, one thing that we did talk about was the idea of an isosceles trapezoid in which the non-parallel sides are congruent. So in this case, if we take a look at side AD and we look at side BC, they do not appear to be congruent. Therefore, this is not an isosceles trapezoid. It is just a regular trapezoid. So. Here in example one, by appearance alone, we can classify polygon ABCD as a quadrilateral and as a 
trapezoid. When it comes to classifying a quadrilateral, you need to be aware of the definitions of these special types of quadrilaterals. Example 2. Classifying a quadrilateral by coordinate methods. Determine the most precise name for the quadrilateral with vertices negative 4, 4, negative 2, 9, 8, 9, and 10, 4. You can see over here to the right, I've graphed these points ahead of time and connected them with lines or line segments so we can see or visualize the quadrilateral we'll be working with. Visually, just by looking at the graph, you should be able to see that BH is parallel to QA and that BQ and HA are not parallel. Therefore, this has one pair of opposite sides that are parallel, which is going to make it a trapezoid. Another thing to note is BQ appears to be equal in length to side HA, which would make an isosceles trapezoid. Now to do this by using coordinates, what we're going to be doing is using two things from algebra really. The first thing is going to be finding the slope of each one of these line segments. The second thing is going to be calculating the distance of each line by using the distance formula. Now, if we take a look at finding the first step, or the first step of this, it really would be to find the slope of each line. This is a very time-consuming process. It's not real hard, but it's time-consuming. So if I want to find the slope, m, remember, is the variable for slope, slope of segment BQ, I have to subtract the y values in the numerator and subtract the x values in the denominator. So in this case, for BQ, I'm going to go 9, take away 4 in the numerator, and negative 2, take away 4, take away a negative 4 in the denominator. When I do the math on this, 4, 9, take away 4 is 5, and negative 2 plus 4 is 2. So the slope of BQ is 5 halves. The slope of the line opposite of that, of HA, is found in the same way. We subtract the y values, 4 take away 9, in the numerator, and then in the denominator, we subtract the x values, 10 take away 8. And this gives us opposite slopes. 4 take away 9 is negative 5, and 8 take away 2 is 10. So we just showed using coordinate method that the side BQ and the side HA are not parallel. We'll continue by finding the slope of sides BH and sides QA. So the slope of segment BH is going to be equal to 9 take away 9 in the numerator, subtracting the y values in the numerator, over 8 take away a negative 2. And this gives us 9 take away 9 is 0, and 8 take away negative 2 is 10, which ultimately becomes a 0. So the slope of segment BH is 0. What we need to do now is find the slope of segment QA. And again, we do that by subtracting the y values in the numerator, q and a, so 4, take away 4 in the numerator, over 10, take away a negative 4 in the denominator, 4 take away 4 is 0, and 10 take away a negative 4 is 14, which ultimately reduces to 0. So, of our two pairs of opposite sides here, BQ and HA over here in black, they don't have the same slope, therefore they're not parallel. Here in the red, the other pair of opposite sides, BH and QA, they have a slope of zero, so what we can determine here is that this quadrilateral has one pair of opposite sides parallel, so we know it's going to be a trapezoid. What we need to do now is determine if BQ and HA are the same distance. So what we're going to do now is calculate the distance of BQ. And we do that 
by using the distance formula, which is the square root of the difference of the x value squared plus the difference of the y value squared, and then we simplify that expression. So in this case, we're going to subtract the x values of b and q. So here we have b and q, so negative 4, take away a negative 2, negative 4, take away negative 2, and we'll square that. And to that, we're going to need to add the difference of the y values. And here we would have 9 take away 4. And we'll square that. Now we need to do a little bit of arithmetic, really, here, simplifying this expression. Negative 4 plus 2 is 2. And when we square 2, it gives us 4. 4 take away or 9 take away 4 is 5, and 5 squared is 25. And we add these two together, it gives us the square root of 29. So the distance of length segment BQ is equal to 29. Now we need to find the length of segment HA. And the reason we need to find the length of segment HA, it's the side that we're trying to determine if it's congruent to or equal to segment BQ. So subtracting the x values of H and A, 10 take away 8. And we will square that. And then we will add that to the difference of the y values, 4 take away 9. We will square that and then simplify that expression, and if they come out to be equal, then we have an isosceles trapezoid. 10 take away 8 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. 4 take away 9 is a negative 5, and negative 5 squared is 25, and it sure looks like it's going to be good to go that we're going to have an isosceles trapezoid, because 4 plus 25 is 29. So the length of segment HA is equal to the square root of 29. So we've shown, using some algebra, that we have an isosceles trapezoid here. So to actually answer this question, what we have here is an isosceles trapezoid. And what it boiled down to was calculating the slope of the sides to determine which sides are parallel, if any, and then using the distance formula to determine which sides have the same length or which sides are congruent, if any. Example 3, using the properties of special quadrilaterals. In parallelogram RSTU, the measure of angle R is equal to 2x minus 10, and the measure of angle X is equal to 3x plus 50. Find x, find the measures of angle t, and angle u. In this particular problem, what you need to realize is that these two angles, r and s, are supplementary. And that's because they are alternate, or I'm sorry, not alternate, but same side interior angles of two parallel lines crossed by a transversal. rs is the transversal. TS and UR are the parallel lines, so R and S are supplementary, which means the equation that we should write would be 2X minus 10 plus 3X plus 50 is equal to 180. When we go to solve this equation on the left-hand side, we have to add together the like terms. In this case, 2x and 3x add together to get 5x. Minus 10 plus 50 is plus 40. Bring down the equal sign. Bring down the 180. Next, I subtract 40 from both sides to undo the addition. On the left of the equal sign, that leaves us with 5x. I bring down the equal sign. And on the right-hand side, it's 180. Take away 40, which gives us 140. Next, I divide each side by 5. The 5's on the left divide out, leaving us 1x on the right-hand side. 5 divides into 140, while 5 goes into 14 twice, with 4 left over, and 5 goes into 48 times. 
So the value of x in this case is 28. That's one of the three answers that we need to know. Now, the neat thing about parallelograms is that opposite angles are equal. So the measure of angle S is going to be equal to the measure of angle U because those two are the opposite angles and those are going to be equal to 3x plus 50. So to find the measure of angle U and the measure of angle X, S really, we substitute 28 in for this x, so that gives us 3 times 28 plus 50. Well, 3 times 28, 3 times 8 is 24, carry the 2. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is 8, so 84 plus 50. And 84 plus 50 is going to give us 134. We use a similar idea to find the measure of angle T, we know since the measure of angle R should be or is equal to the measure of angle T because they are opposite angles of a parallelogram. We take the expression for angle R, 2x minus 10, and we substitute 28 in for x. So 28, or yeah, 2 times 28 minus x. Not minus x, but minus 10. 2 times 28 is 56, and 56 minus 10 is equal to 46. So the measure of angle U is 134, and the measure of angle T is 46. So I've circled all three of our answers here. The value of X is 28. Remember, I wrote this original equation because the sum of these two angles R and S is equal to 180 because they are same side interior angles, which are supplementary. Once I solve for X, I substitute that value back into the original expressions to find the measures of angle R and S, which then I can conclude the measures of angle T and U because opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent or have equal measures. This has been Mr. Polarski on classifying quadrilaterals and solving some basic problems. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.